यत सर्वाणि भूतानि भवन्त्यादि युगागमे यस्मिंश्चा प्रलयम् यान्ति पुनरेव युगक्षये all living beings come from Lord Krishna at the beginning of creation. Yata sarvani bhutani. Sarvani means all. Bhutani means living beings. The, bhu, the word bhuta is used here. They are maintained by Lord Krishna while the creation is manifested. Bhavanti ya adi yuga kame, which means adi yuga means during the beginning of creation. And they enter into him again when the creation is destroyed. Yes means cha pralayam yanti. Pralaya means destruction. Anti means end. Punareva yuga che. This happens again and again and again. Every yuga. Alright. Note, Srila Balde Vidya Bhushan notes that um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the source of the entire creation. He quotes the authoritative statement of Vedanta Sutra 1.1.2 Janma Dyasya Yataha The absolute truth is he from whom everything emanates. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vishnu Sahasalam playlist. Uh, and today we reach the 11th verse, which is a very beautiful verse, which explains the creation as it says, all living beings come from Lord Krishna at the beginning of creation. And in the previous verse, we saw Pavitranam Pavitram Yo Mangalanam Cha Mangalam Daivatana Daivatam Devatanam Cha Daivatam Devatanam Cha <laughs> Bhutanam Yo Vyayapita. Lord Krishna is the most purifying of all purifiers. And he is who gives the power to remove sinful reactions to the Ganges and other places of pilgrimage. He is the most auspicious of all auspicious personalities. And it is he who gives to Ganesh and others the power to remove obstacles. He is the most worshipable person, superior to Brahma and all the demigods. He is eternal, original father of all living entities. So in that we discussed in the last video that um, how the mother Ganges originated from uh, Vaman Dev okay, by blessings of Vaman Dev when he pierce the shell of the universe and from the Viraja river, Viraja river, the Ganges came, which touched the feet of Vamandev and that is why it is very auspicious. And um, Brahmaji that time had uh, taken some of the waters of the river Ganga in his Kamandal. Okay. So <clears throat> that is why it is known as very, very, very auspicious and by grace, by the grace of uh, the great Bhagirath and uh, blessings of Lord Shiva. This uh, we are uh, able to uh, take bath in Mother, Mother Ganga, even in this uh, Bhuloka, which is there uh, in India. All right, so we should offer our respects to Maharaj Bhagirath, who had done penance for many, 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 many years uh, to deliver his ancestors, and because of uh, which we are also getting the blessings now all right so so today's verse is a very beautiful verse it shows the uh, origin of everything actually it says all living beings come from krishna at the very beginning of the creation so we'll discuss a bit on the universal creation today it's a very beautiful verse to discuss on this especially the yuga cycles also all right so as usual if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope you can go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him all living beings come from lord krishna at the beginning of creation so so beginning what happens is uh, lord krishna expands himself right and then uh, there is Mahavishnu. Uh, so I, I won't explain the, the expansions of the spiritual world. It's very big and it's a lot in detail. So there's no, no time to explain that in this video. But uh, let's imagine from somewhere, from one of the expans expansions of Krishna, uh, Mahavishnu appears actually. Okay, So Mahavishnu is one who is in charge of all the material universes actually 
so he is the one uh, from who sleeps in this viraja river okay viraja river is the junction between the material and the spiritual world so uh, the uh, mahavishnu uh, sleeps in the viraja river as you see vishnu is uh, taking rest he is in yoga nidra and um, from mahavishnu's body the uh, millions and millions and billions and trillions and unlimited number of universes come out actually okay uh, i mean material universes and every universe has one one brahma allocated to him you know, allocated to it i mean uh, not exactly allocated but the brahma is uh, one universe has one brahma that's why the universe is known as brahmanda anda means ek so this universe one universe is like uh, it's like the kingdom of one brahma okay like president has president of usa has power over usa prime minister of india has power over india so one brahma has the authority over one entire universe and uh, our our universe um, this universe where we are living this has 14 planetary systems okay so 14 planetary systems means uh, not 14 planets 14 planetary systems okay so different levels of karmic access so which means uh, our earth is the seventh okay uh, earth means not earth is not a planetary system earth earth the place where we are living is a part of bhuloka actually so the name of this planetary system is known as bhulo okay so then we have uh, six planetary systems above this bhuloka and then we have seven below okay and uh, the topmost of the planetary systems in this brahmanda is uh, known as satya loka or brahma loka where lord brahma resides so after that there are you know five and then we have the seventh actually okay So in that there are these lokas are there, you know, Gyana Lok, Tapa Lok, you know, Mahar Loka is there, then Swarga is there, then all these Bhuvar Loka is there, right? So that that we can discuss some other time, the planetary systems, and then below there is you know Atal, Vital, Sutal, Talatal, Mahatal, Patal, like this. So like that we have below and then above, right? So. And uh, these 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 planetary systems actually. uh these are created by lord brahma and uh when uh, mahavishnu from mahavishnu's body one universe comes out then there is uh every universe has one one vishnu okay so that specific vishnu is known as garbhodakshay vishnu who is garbhodakshay vishnu garbhodakshay vishnu is the one who expands in every universe actually Okay, and the word says garba. The garba means uh, the, as they say, the womb actually. So, from his navel, uh, there are, there is a lotus which comes out, and above the lotus, Lord Brahma is sitting. Okay, therefore, Lord Vishnu is also known as Padmanabh. Okay, Padmanabh means one from whose uh, the navel there is a lotus okay padma means uh, lotus and nabha means the navel actually it's very interesting you know nabha navel <laughs> so from his nabhi the navel the lotus comes out and on the top of the lotus lord brahma is sitting actually and uh, then what happens this this is known he's known as garbhodakshay vishnu okay and then uh, <clears throat> when brahma uh, brahma is created from the top of the lotus he he is awakened and he is the first created living entity and he is born without the union of another female so lord vishnu has the power to procreate uh, without any female he is he is not like a normal ordinary man who needs another woman to procreate so that is why lord brahma he is known as swayambhu Okay, so if you read the description of the twelve Mahajans, you will find uh, it is like this. You know, Swamhu Narada Shambhu. So Swamhu is Lord Brahma himself. Okay, then Narada is Narada Muni Brahma Ji's son. Then Swamhu Narada Shambhu. Shambhu is Lord Shiva himself. Okay. <clears throat> so then from Mahavishnu we have this Garbhodakshay Vishnu, 
so every universe has one one garbo daksha vishnu and within the universe there is a special uh, uh place known as uh, garbodak ocean actually okay so garbodak ocean is the ocean where uh, the garbo daksha vishnu resides okay he's he's also resting there in yog nidra actually and then uh, brahma ji is created but he's the first living being so he has no idea of what is going on he gets up and he sees pitch darkness everywhere he cannot understand anything actually so he does penance for many many hundreds and thousands of years as the shrimad bhagavatam says and <clears throat> then what happens is um, uh, he hears these two syllables okay tapa 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 so he hears tap tap Top, 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 like this. He hears this, uh, and then he is uh, a very intelligent person. So he comes to know what is the meaning of this word. Okay, so he understands that uh, tapa means to do penance, tapasya. So he does penance for many, many years, and he also tries to go up and down of this lotus, okay, which comes out from Vishnu's navel, Garbo Daksha Vishnu's navel, but all his efforts. Go in vain. He is unable to understand, as uh, it is said. You know, yasyantam navidusura surgana devaya tasmai nama. Yasyantam navidusura means uh, this is a prayer to Lord Vishnu. It says that uh, even the your your end yasya anta means your activities and your actions, the end and your beginning cannot be understood by. Yasyantam Navidusura, which means the suras, the devatas, they cannot understand, including uh, Shiva, Brahma, Indra, and all this. Uh, Yasyantam Navidusura, Devaya Tasmai Namaha. Okay. Um, so, therefore, Brahmaji cannot understand, and then he does penance, and then Lord Vishnu appears in front of him. And then Lord Vishnu tells him that, yes, now you have to do the creation, and from the, then from him the prajapatis appear actually. So this is how the creation is done actually. Okay, it's a very long process, but I'm just saying here. And then uh, all the living beings come from Lord Krishna at the beginning of the creation. They are manifested by Lord Krishna while the while the creation is manifested, and they enter into Him again when the creation is destroyed. So then there is another Vishnu, third type of Vishnu, uh, who is known as Shirodakshai Vishnu. Okay, so. Chirodakshai Vishnu uh, is the one who uh, exp so when Brahma creates the entities but uh, everybody is dead actually okay, because the bodies have no life. So Chirodakshai Vishnu is the one who enters into each and every uh, particle of uh, this universe actually. Okay, So he is the one who is there as the Sena God is everywhere. Uh, so he is the one who is there everywhere. So he is the one which is who is holding everyone and everything. All right. So he is the one who also expands as the Paramatma in every living being's heart. As Krishna says in the Gita, na, Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam Riddeshi Arjuna Tishthati. So he expands, and uh, because of him, there is life actually. Okay. Without him, there is no life. Okay. So Chirodakshai Vishnu is the third type of Vishnu. So and then one Brahma has uh, different uh, Manus. So, uh, so one Brahma lives for 100 years. Okay, 100 years means not 100 years of the humans, 100 years of, the, of his lifespan. And his lifespan is very big actually. Okay. So it is almost uh, 300 trillion life, life years according to human calculation. That is his lifespan. All right. We can discuss about that some other time. Um, but the thing is, uh, that is his lifespan, and then uh, so then he has you know like days. So, so as we have you know days, months, years, so he also has days. So, his one day of Brahma is divided uh, into 14 Manus. Okay, so like we have one day which is divided into 24 hours, so his time is divided into 14 Manus, and <clears throat> Uh, total time of one uh, day is uh, approximately 1000 Divya Yugas. Now, this is a very complicated calculation which I am about to tell you. You may feel a bit overwhelmed, so uh, please uh, make notes. Okay. <laughs> so, there are like 1000 Divya Yugas. Okay. So, 
now uh, one divya uh, what is one divya yug divya yug is a combination of four yugas uh, satya yug dwapar yug treta yug kali yug these four yugas okay satya yuga is the first yuga and then uh, dwapar yuga is the second and treta yuga is the third and kali yuga is the fourth okay and uh, this four combined is known as one divya yuga and uh, the kali yuga's life span is 432000 years according to earthly calculation it's 432000 years and kali yuga started approximately when krishna left which is 5000 years back so we have almost 428 or 27000 years remaining approximate okay bit bit around that so <clears throat> and then uh, the previous yuga which is known as treta yuga is a uh, double of kali yuga okay then the then uh, dwapar yuga is even uh, double of that and you know, satya yuga is even double of that right so so it's it's a very complicated calculation so these four when you add becomes one divya yuga okay and then you add thousand like this that that becomes one day of brahma okay and if you divide this 1000 by 14 so this is around 77 so if you divide 1000 by 14 this comes to 71.4 okay so every 71 divya yugas are ruled by one one manu okay the shrimad bhagavata mentions different manu chakshashu manu then uh, uh, we have vivaswan then all these manus are there then swambhu manu is there okay so uh, these manus have a particular set of devatas actually so so for example 1000 divya yugas are there so for 72 millennium so this one divya yuga is known as one millennium as i said four yugas combined divya yuga is one millennium so 1000 millenniums are there so one uh, so like this 72 millenniums approx as we saw 71.4 Uh, but why is it 0.4? It's actually not 0.4. Uh, it is 71 actually. Uh, but there is something known as sandhya actually. Okay, so that that's again very complicated to explain. So sandhya is like evening. Okay, and uh, yeah, so 14 manus are there in this thousand divya yugas. Okay, so if you take 71, then what happens? So suppose this is the first the day of Brahma has just started. So then the first manu comes. Okay, then uh that manu will have indra chandra varuna agni and all this you know so these devatas will be there and they will all rule for 71 millenniums okay and then when 71 millenniums are gone then again then a uh, new manu comes okay then a new manvantara starts and then again there is a new indra there is new uh, Uh, chandra chandra varuna agni and all these okay so the current indra of this manvantar his name is purandar and the indra in the next manvantar is bali maharaj okay you know, that's very complicated but this is just to give you an explanation so like this when uh, when there are thousand divya yugas which are completed then uh, brahma ji's one day is finished 24 hours actually okay and then there is a bridge time known as sandhya also and then exactly the same time is the night actually okay so it is like 2000 millenniums actually so 1000 millenniums is the day and then 1000 millenniums is the night okay so like that if you calculate it comes to around 311 trillion years or something like this okay which we will discuss some other time uh yeah so th this is how the system works actually okay and um when one brahma's 100 years get over then uh, if he has perfected his life spiritually then he goes back to the spiritual world okay he does not take birth but if he has uh, not perfected and got entangled in material activities then he again has to take birth and maybe uh, become another brahma or glide down into lower species if the, that brahma has done sinful activities okay so this is how you have to understand this is explained in the shrimad bhagavatam okay but the origin is explained bhagavatam explains ete cha am sa kalapum sam krishna astu bhagavan swayam that there are many there are many amshas and kalas amshas are and kalas they are like expansions or uh, it's very complicated i can explain now there is vivinna amsha there is swamsha okay 
So, <laughs> one video is not enough to explain the universal structure, I guess. So, and then, uh, but Ete Chamsa Kala Pumsam, uh, Krishna Astu Bhagwan Swam, but he is the original personality of Godhead, okay. So, this is what Srimad Bhagavatam says, and from how from Krishna, uh, Mahavishnu comes, you know, there's again this, you know, quadrupole expansions, you know, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, Pradyumna, and it's like, Balramji is there, Baldev is there, it's um, it's very complicated. And then there is a second quadrupole expansion, okay, from them, and then Mahavishnu comes from one of them. So, we shall discuss about it some other time, but this was a good uh, video to explain the universal structure, okay. And there are three types of pralayas which happen actually. So, in one type of pralaya, what happens, uh, the first three... Uh, universal uh, the planetary realms stay and the rest are destroyed and the other one everything is destroyed okay I mean uh, apart from Lord Brahma's place everything is destroyed and um, oh sorry uh, the second prala is uh, the Brahmanda itself gets destroyed okay uh, or we shall discuss about this pralai some other time alright it's a very complicated topic actually and the third pralai is like everything is destroyed everything <laughs> okay it's a very big topic we shall discuss it some other time all right thank you very much for your patience and uh, if you are new then please subscribe to the channel and if you want to watch other videos i on karma i'll put it here all right god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him